Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters. I'm your host, Mitch. Glad to have you here. Here at the Commander's Quarters, we're all about Commander on a budget. Today's episode is going to be a $50 deck tech. When I say $50, I mean that is an overall deck cost. Both shipping and commanders that are $10 or less are going to be included in that cost, but basic lands will not be. Decks on this channel are built to be fun, inexpensive, and focused. If you want to learn more about what a focused commander deck is, check out this video here. On this deck tech, I'm going to take you through its strategy, the tactics, and how this deck wins. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. And while you're at it, subscribe and review our podcast as well. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. Also, make sure you check out the Porcine Stand, our limited edition playmat on Kickstarter that's only available for the 30-day campaign. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. In the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all of their support. Today's commander is Skeleton Ship. It's a 0-3 skeleton that costs 3 blue-black. It says when you control no islands, sacrifice Skeleton Ship. And you can tap it to put a minus one minus one counter on target creature. Now, no offense to Skeleton Ship, but it's definitely not one of the most powerful commanders out there. For whatever reason, if we don't control an island, we have to sacrifice it. Because it's a ship, I guess flavor-wise, that makes sense. Tapping to put a minus one minus one counter on target creature isn't bad, but it's not all that powerful by itself. There are plenty of ways, though, that we can really abuse that ability and make it much more effective. This kind of a commander might not seem like much to our opponents, so we're going to use that to our advantage. They might not see us as a threat until it's too late for them. Also, the art features skeletons riding turtles, so what's not to love about that? So what's our strategy with this deck? We're going to control the board with our commander in various ways. As I mentioned before, our commander's ability might not be that powerful to start, but we've got some ways to abuse it and make it extremely impactful. And then how do we win with this deck? We're going to win in some unexpected ways with our non-threatening ship. We have a couple of rounds to victory, including stealing our opponent's creatures and even infect. As with all commander's quarters decks, I'm going to take you through 10 different tactics that show you how the deck works and how we're going to win with it. So let's start off with tactic number one, set sail. First up, there's Wayfarer's Bobble, which we can pay two to tap and sacrifice it to get a base land into play tapped. Next up, we've got two mana rocks that cost two and tap for a colorless with Mind Stone and Prismatic Lens. On top of that, we can pay one to tap and sacrifice Mind Stone to draw a card and Prismatic Lens can help filter our mana. And then we've got Sphere of the Suns, which comes into play tapped and can tap for any color three times. Star Compass also comes into play tapped and can tap for either of our colors depending on our land situation. And then we can pay one to tap to Mirror Signet to add blue black. Next up, there's Fire Mind Vessel, which comes into play tapped and taps for two mana of different colors. And finally, we're running Everflowing Chalice and Astral Cornucopia, which can be fantastic in this deck. Both tap for an amount of mana based on the number of charge counters that they have. With this deck, we've got plenty of ways to increase those charge counters on them, but we'll tackle that later. Now, after we've ramped and gotten our commander out, what next? It's time for us to move on to tactic number two, turn to starboard. First up, there's Cerulean Wisps and Refocus, which are going to untap our commander and draw us a card. As I mentioned before, our commander's ability might seem underwhelming at first, but being able to untap and get extra value out of that ability can really add up throughout the game. So we're also running Dramatic Reversal and Intellectual Offering. Dramatic Reversal is going to untap all non-land permanents we control. An Intellectual Offering says, choose an opponent, you and that player each draw three cards, choose an opponent, untap all non-land permanents you control, and all non-land permanents that player controls. So these will untap all of our non-land permanents, including our commander, our mana rocks, other creatures, and other things too. Once we're set up properly, these can lead to some really explosive turns and set us way ahead. And finally, we're also running Breaking Wave, which is a pretty flexible card. It's a sorcery for two blue blue, but we can cast it as though it had flash if we pay two more to cast it. It says simultaneously untap all tapped creatures and tap all untapped creatures. So we can use this offensively or defensively depending on the situation. But we've even got some repeatable untap effects as well. So let's look at them now in tactic number three, turn to port. First up, there's Disciple of the Ring, which can help us in a variety of ways. By paying one, we can exile an instant or sorcery card from our graveyard and choose one. We can counter target non-creature spell unless this controller pays two. Disciple of the Ring gets plus one plus one until end of turn. We can tap target creature or untap target creature. And then Chakram Retriever can do a lot of work just by being in play. It says whenever you cast a spell during your turn, untap target creature. Additional free value like this can come in really handy throughout the game. Some other free untap effects come from Vizier of Tumbling Sands, Fate Stitcher, and Tidewater Minion. By simply tapping them, we can untap a permanent. And we even have some low-cost effects as well, like Nibbles of the Breath, Puppeteer, and Tideforce Elemental. By paying a blue and tapping them, we can tap or untap target creature. And Tideforce Elemental can even untap when a land comes into play under our control. Next up, there's Puppet Strings, which we can pay two to tap or untap target creature. And finally, we've got some auras that can help as well with Second Wind and Freed from the Reel. We can tap Second Wind to tap Enchanted Creature or untap Enchanted Creature. And then Freed from the Reel allows us to pay a blue to do the same. Once we're really set up, Freed from the Reel can be extremely powerful on our commander. But let's talk about some other cards that can make our commander's ability even more powerful. 
So now let's move on to tactic number four, rowboats. First up, we've got Polymorphous Jess, which says, until end of turn, each creature target player controls loses all abilities and becomes a blue frog with base power and toughness, 1-1. One, one. Now a minus one, minus one counter on a large creature might not be that effective, but no matter how big an opponent's creature is, if we turn into a 1-1, one, one, just one counter can kill it. We just need one counter on each of that opponent's creatures to wipe the board with this. Another way to do this is with Mass Diminished, which says, until your next turn, creatures target player controls have base power and toughness, 1-1, one, one, and it's got flashback for three and a blue. So this might not be as flexible because we can't cast it at instant speed, but we can use it twice. Our opponents might think they're safe with their large creatures, but we can really use these to turn the tide. But what are some other ways that we can make our commander's ability even more impactful? Let's go over some ways to do that in tactic number five, sinking ships. First up, there's Glaring Spotlight, which does a lot of things for this deck. It says creatures your opponents control with Hexproof can be the targets of spells and abilities you control as though they didn't have Hexproof. And then by paying three and sacrificing it, creatures we control gain Hexproof until end of turn and are unblockable this turn. So this can allow our commander to target any of our opponent's creatures that have Hexproof. It can also protect our team and finish our opponents off too. Next up, we've got Banishing Knack and Retraction Helix, which can kind of change our commander's ability up. They both say until end of turn, target creature gains, tap, return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. With all the untap effects that we have, these can both come in really handy. But a somewhat permanent way of doing this, at least for creatures, comes with Cowardice. It says whenever a creature becomes the target of a spell or ability, return that creature to its owner's hand. So with this in play, we can easily bounce creatures. Another way to make our commander and some of our other permanents even more effective comes with Hirobi Death's Whale. It says whenever a creature becomes the target of a spell or ability, destroy that creature. So with this in play, our commander essentially becomes tap, destroy target creature. But the most effective effect like these comes with our Golden Pig of the deck. The Golden Pig is going to be our number one card out of our 99. And the Golden Pig for this deck is Dismiss into Dream. It's an enchantment for six in a blue and it says each creature your opponent's control is an illusion in addition to its other types and has, when this creature becomes the target of a spell or ability, sacrifice it. So first off, this is an enchantment which is much harder for our opponents to deal with rather than a creature like Hirobi. On top of that, this is a non-symmetrical effect that only affects our opponent's creatures. And it even makes them sacrifice those creatures so it can get around things like Indestructible. This turns our commander and some of our other permanents into killing machines. And that's what makes it the Golden Pig. But outside of these effects, we've got other ways to make our commander's ability more effective. So let's tackle them now in tactic number six, Deep Water. First up, there's Grim Affliction, which says put a minus one, minus one counter on target creature, then proliferate. So proliferating means you choose any number of permanents and or players with counters on them, then you give each another counter of a kind they already have. So basically, we can add more counters to creatures that already have them. So we're also running Throne of Geth and Contagion Clasp. Throne of Geth lets us tap and sacrifice an artifact to proliferate. And when Contagion Clasp comes into play, we put a minus one, minus one counter on target creature, and we can pay four and tap it to proliferate. Next up, some more repeatable effects come from Thrumming Bird and Guild Pact Informant. Both can essentially proliferate when they get through in combat. Then Flex Channeler makes it even easier. It says whenever you cast a non-creature spell, proliferate. We even have some draw spells that can help us out as well with Contentious Plan, Steady Progress, and Tezzeret's Gambit. On top of proliferating, Contentious Plan and Steady Progress draw us one, and Tezzeret's Gambit draws us two. But these aren't the only ways that we're going to draw cards with this stack. It's time for us to move on to tactic number seven, all aboard. First up, there's Read the Bones, which lets us scry two, then draw two, and we lose two life. And then Siphon Mind makes everyone else discard a card, and we draw a card for each card discarded this way. So generally, for four mana, we make everyone discard a card, and we draw three. Next up, we've got some instant speed draw with Reign of Revelation, Careful Consideration, and Factor Fiction. Reign of Revelation is going to draw us three cards, and we discard one. Careful Consideration says target player draws four, then discards three, but if this spell was cast during our main phase, instead that player draws four and discards two. Factor Fiction says reveal the top five cards of your library, and opponent separates those into two piles, put one pile into your hand, and the other into your graveyard. Instant speed just gives us more flexibility with what we can do with our mana. So we're also running some instant speed X spells with Epiphany the Drown Yard and Pull from Tomorrow. Epiphany the Drown Yard is essentially a reverse factor fiction for X. And then Pull from Tomorrow draws us X cards and we only discard one. Finally, there's Monastery Siege, which when it comes into play, we choose either cons or dragons. If we choose cons at the beginning of our draw step, we draw an additional card, then discard a card. If we choose dragons, spells our opponents cast that target us or permanent we control cost two more to cast. Now, looting isn't card advantage, but it is card selection, so it can help us get rid of any dead cards in our hand. And if we don't need that card selection, we can choose dragons to protect ourselves and our permanents. But we've got some more protection in this deck as well. So now let's move on to tactic number eight, Ship Shape. First up, we've got Crab Umbra and Pemmin's Aura, which are fantastic in this deck. Crab Umbra is going to give our commander totem armor, and we can pay two and a blue to untap it. And then Pemmin's Aura has a lot of abilities, but the two relevant ones are going to be that we can pay a blue to untap enchanted creature, and we can pay a blue to give it shroud until end of turn. So these can each allow us to untap our commander on top of protecting it. And then there's Swift of Boots, which gives our commander Hexproof and Haste, which are both very relevant with our commander. Finally, we're running Negate and Unwind, which can both counter target non creature spell, and Unwind's going to untap three lands. Now, after we're all set up and controlling the board, sometimes we need a very specific card to win. So it's time to move on to tactic number nine, sink or swim. First up, there's Diabolic Tutor, which is very simple, but effective. For two black black, it's going to tutor any card into our hand. And then there's Razakast Right, which costs one more and does the same, but it also has cycling for a black. So if we don't need that tutor, we can cycle it away to get something else. But what kind of finishers will we tutor for with this stack? 
So let's move on to our final tactic, tactic number 10, I'm sailing away. First up, there's Nest of Scarabs, which says, whenever you put one or more minus one minus one counters on a creature, create that many one one black insect creature tokens. With our commander's ability, untap effects and proliferating, this can get out of hand quickly. We can also use our opponent's creatures against them, though, with things like Willbender and Grave Betrayal. Willbender says, whenever a creature an opponent controls becomes the target of a spell or ability you control, gain control of that creature for as long as you control Willbender. So with this deck, we've got plenty of ways to target our opponent's creatures and gain control of them. And then Grave Betrayal says, whenever a creature you don't control dies, return to the battlefield under your control with an additional plus one plus one counter on it at the beginning of the next end step. That creature is a black zombie addition to its other colors and types. We've got plenty of ways with this deck to kill our opponent's creatures, and now we gain control of them when they die. Another way is a very simple but effective one with Reigns of Power. It says, untap all creatures you control and all creatures target opponent controls. You and that opponent each gain control of all creatures the other controls until end of turn. Those creatures gain haste until end of turn. This is a very flexible card and it can even win us the game in the right situation. And finally, this deck can even win with Infect as well, so we're going to be running things like Corrupted Conscious, Core Prowler, and Tainted Strike. Corrupted Conscious is going to gain us control of a creature, and it gives it Infect. Core Prowler has Infect, and when it dies, we proliferate. And finally, Tainted Strike is going to give target creature plus one plus zero and Infect until end of turn. Any of these cards can make our proliferation absolutely deadly to our opponents. Again, Skeleton Ship might not seem like a very threatening commander at all, but there are always going to be ways to build around commanders to make them effective. But now that we've gone through the spells in this deck, let's go on to the mana base. First up, there's Exotic Orchard, which can tap for either of our colors most of the time. Up next, we've got Evolving Wilds and Terramorphic Expanse, which we can tap to sacrifice to get a basic land into play tapped. And then we're running two of the panoramas with Esper and Grixis. Next up, there's Warp Landscape, which we can pay two to tap and sacrifice to get a basic land into play tapped. And then there's Mirror Landscape, which comes into play tapped, we can pay two to tap and sacrifice to get two basic lands into play tapped that share land type. Next up, there's Fetid Pools, which comes into play tapped, we can cycle it for two. And then we've got Karn's Bastion, which we can pay four and tap it to proliferate. Finally, we're running 26 basic lands, 20 of those will be an island, and 6 will be a swamp. And now that we've gone through every single card in this deck, let's do a quick price check. A quick reminder that our deck costs are calculated using TCG Player Optimization, optimizing with even heavily played and damaged cards because those cards need a home too. The average Skeleton Ship EDH Rec deck will set you back $186.12. Our deck is much more affordable, coming in at $49.67. Again, the price of this deck is the price that I got for it on the day that I'm recording. If you want to see a breakdown of this deck's cost, check out the link in the description. Keep in mind that prices can and will fluctuate and change over time. But with these deck costs, I want to be as transparent as I possibly can. Again, Commander's Quarters decks are about to be tuned and focused within their budget, but there are always ways that we can improve on them. So let's go through some reasonable upgrades now to see what some of those ways just might be. First up, let's add in Illusion Bracers by taking out Second Wind. And then let's put in Mage Rite Stone by taking out Puppet Strings. Next up, we're adding in Thousand Year Elixir by taking out Niblis of the Breath. And then let's add in Nexorable Tide by taking out Steady Progress. Next up, let's put in Crumbling Ashes by taking out Breaking Wave. And finally, let's put in Necro Skitter by taking out Reigns of Power. And now it's my turn to hear from you. So in the comments below, let me know what you think about this deck and what you think about the commander in general. Also, make sure you check out the Porcine Stand, our limited edition playmat that's only available for the 30-day Kickstarter campaign. Once that campaign ends, it will no longer be available for purchase, so make sure you're backing the campaign before it's too late. And make sure you're following us on social media for more updates and sneak peeks on future episodes. Again, a huge thank you to my patrons who helped make this show possible. I truly couldn't do any of this without your support. If you want to support this channel directly, consider becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, including being able to vote on future commanders for deck tax. There are even tiers where you get your own personalized deck tech dedicated to you. You can check out all the Patreon tiers and rewards at patreon.com slash commanders quarters. If you haven't already, make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel. Here at the Commander's Quarters, we're all about budget commander. So while you're at it, go ahead and check out some of our other types of episodes. And with that, I'm out of here. Thanks again and have a good one.